subscribe AMI and get the latest technological updates every day. Also press this bell icon so you won't miss any of my latest videos. Hi guys, welcome back to AMI. So guys, this guy is Mr. William Hume Rothery. So guys, he's a you know material scientist or metallurgist. He's a he's a material scientist as well. So he has done some researching, uh, like uh, in the he has done some research in this uh, the materials like combination, their atomic level, their substructure the combining powers and everything so he has uh, almost uh, uh, he has given some rules that is Hume Rothery rules of solid solubility so we are going to learn this Hume Rothery rules of solid solubility so solubility is nothing but the metal to metal combination so first one is the base metal and second one is the impurities as we have seen in our last uh, video okay so guys uh, what is the aim of this solubility why do we need to obtain the solubility so to obtain the particular homogeneous structure or homogeneous solid solution so there are some rules guys let's check it out those rules the first one is the atomic size factor so guys atomic size factor which is for the solute and the solid matters plays a very important role in the solubility that is the difference of the atomic size of the solute and the solvent if it is less than 15 percent the difference it is said to have a good solubility where if it is uh, more than 15% the solute solubility gets limited so that is the first one that is the atomic size factor let's get a take an example that is chromium and nickel the size of the chromium is 128 picometer whereas in size of the ni nickel is 128 so it's almost same so that's why the solute solubility for these two is good next is the chemical affinity factor so guys, the, here are some of the chemicals such as the ethylene, acetylene, hydrogen and carbon. So chemical affinity factor is nothing but the bonding tendency of the elements. So that is the chemical affinity. So greater the chemical affinity of two metals, greater is their solubility. Tendency of compound formation, that is the solubility greater. Such as uh, in case of hydrocarbons, so we have got over here this uh, ethylene which is nothing but the uh, mixture of this uh, hydrogen and the carbon so so guys for obtaining this chemical affinity so we have hydrogen located at one end of the periodic table and the carbon located at the another end of the periodic table so we have seen the farthest apart elements in the periodic table is having a high chemical affinity means they can have high solubility so third is the relative valency factor so if we go on a microscopic level that is the atomic structure the valency plays a very important role in the combination of the two metals so let's uh, what is the valency first of all so valency is the combining capacity of the elements such as in case of the metals it is the number of the electrons in the outermost orbit or the outermost shell such as let's take an example like uh, aluminium so that is the electronic structure that is 2 plus uh, 8 plus 3 so 3 electrons are the outermost orbit so the valency of this aluminium is 3 so in case of non-metals it's exactly different actually so it is the 8 minus number of electrons in the outermost orbit so that is the formula for the calculating valency in case of non-metals okay so guys let's take an example this is the oxygen atom so having the 2 plus 6 electrons in the outermost orbit so that is 8 minus 6 is equals to 2 so the valency of non-metal in uh, oxygen is 2 so let's take uh, check the relative valency factor and how does it works of in case of solute and solvent metals so the valency of the solute and solvent so this having the difference <coughs> basically so guys a metal of the higher valency can dissolve with the metal of the lower valency such as in case of this aluminum and oxygen so the formation of the compounds occurs 
so aluminum and oxygen gives us the al2o3 that is nothing but the aluminum oxide which is a compound so guys in this case the relative valency factor plays a important role in the formation of the solute uh, solutions the next is the crystal structure so apart from uh, atomic structure the next is the crystal structure that is nothing but the metals with the same crystal structure is tends to have a high solubility whereas the metals with a different crystal structure will be having the uh, so limited solubility so guys we have seen over here four factors which is nothing but the atomic size factor the chemical affinity factor and the third is the relative valency factor four is the crystal structure factor so guys uh, we can determine the solubility by considering all these factors for the solubility of the one metal into the another so guys this four factors combining which is known as the hume rothery rules of solute solubility so guys i hope you understand this hume rothery rules of solute solubility guys so thank you for watching my video guys please do subscribe